assistant, I used to go around the factory just to look around at what was going on. I used to take two little metal boxes that were used for garbage and walk around as if I was, uh, you know, doing something. And eventually I used to take these two boxes to my sister. Uh, she used to put uh, a little bit uh, of uh, gunpowder wrapped up in a little rug tied with a string into a box and uh, put garbage on the top box and I was walking with these two boxes from my place to her door and from her door back into my place and put it under the table and put it inside the um, cuff of my uh, dress because we didn't have pockets. From there I used to go to the washroom and in the washroom share this uh, gunpowder with another girl, with Allah. And uh, on the way from the factory, it was about three kilometers to Birkenau where we lived, we used to carry this on our uh, bodies. From time to time there were searches. When we heard that there was a search, we used to unwrap this gunpowder, throw it on the ground, and mix it with our feet on the ground so it was not distinguishable from the dirt underfoot. And if there was no search? Then we used to bring it to Birkenau. I gave it to my sister, and my sister gave it to I don't know, either they left it to Roger Robota or to somebody else. I don't know exactly who gave it to Roger Robota. And from Roger Robota, it went? It went to a special hiding place. Roger Robota had contact with the men from the crematorium. And uh, they had the privileges uh, to come into the women's camp. And in that particular spot, they used to come and pick it up and bring it into the crematorium. In October 44, there was a revolt in the crematorium. The Zonder Commando, those were the people who were manning the crematorium, knew that uh, from time to time, after a certain period of work, they were being uh, murdered as not to bear witnesses. And that particular group decided that they are going to rebel. They used this gunpowder and manufactured little uh, hand grenades made out of uh, uh, metal round boxes of shoe polish with a wick and filled with uh, gunpowder. And when you lit it, it exploded. I don't know how much damage it did or it didn't. This revolt that took place on October 7, 1944, was aborted. Uh, either they were betrayed or uh, whatever. All the Zonder Commando people were uh, uh, killed. But the crematorium was destroyed as well. Since there were four crematoriums in Birkenau and one was destroyed by this. After the revolt, uh, the Germans found this little handmade grenades and they identified the gunpowder, which of course we didn't know that gunpowder has some char special characteristic. They identified this gunpowder as coming only from the Union and only from Pulveram, where my sister worked. They uh, uh, started an investigation. They uh, imprisoned the uh, four girls, uh, Roja Robota, Ala Gertner, Regina Safirstein, and Esther Weisblum. They tortured them mercilessly and eventually hanged them publicly on uh, January 5th, 1945. Did you witness your sister's hanging? No, I didn't. Uh, during the period of my sister being incarcerated in the bunker, which was the prison within the prison, uh, Marta succeeded to bring me letters from her from, and from Jakob, who was the capo of this bunker. He was very, very sympathetic to the girls.
be sympathetic to the girls. And through him, I received letters. You were saying that Marta brought letters. Marta br brought letters. And she was trying to get me to see my sister, but it never materialized. But Marta, sowing my depression, arranged with bribes to put me in a hospital in Auschwitz. At this point, the Union uh, commander was in Auschwitz. And uh, she was trying to reassure me and tell me, uh, apparently, Jakob uh, received an order to execute the girls, but he was stalling for time and he refused. He had the power to refuse it and he said he's not going to execute the order un unless he's going to get it from Berlin. So it lasted for a while and finally the order from Berlin came and he didn't have a choice. Marta was always coming with visiting me every day and she was telling me that uh, there was no order that they are going, that everything is going to be okay, and uh, she wouldn't tell me the truth. On the day of the execution, I was in the hospital, and Marta came to take me out. Uh, the Union commander was uh, released earlier to witness the execution, but Marta's friends, Shari and Nelly, grabbed me and put me in the block so that I won't have to witness it. And I didn't know what was going on. I suspected, but I wasn't sure. And when we were on the block and I wanted to run out, they bodily held me, they wouldn't let me out. And I heard this collective groan, and I knew what happened. So I wasn't, I didn't witness it with my eyes, but I was there.